welcome to our evening time of meditation today is thursday as i said yesterday today is traditionally considered as monday thursday part of the holy week and part of the lent season it has good traditional values but our concern here though we appreciate traditional practices we want to focus more on the biblical values in anything and everything we do so now on this particular day what had happened I have already listed out accordingly yesterday, Wednesday was the day for preparation, preparation for the Passover supper. Thursday, the main event is Passover supper. But Matthew has given a very detailed long report about events on this particular day, which is Thursday. So we have to adhere ourselves to Matthew's writings in order to understand the biblical teaching or the biblical values involved on this traditional practice of Monday Thursday. If you could take chapter 24 of Matthew's Gospel, verse 1. And all through chapter 26, verse 46. All that are part and parcel of this day, that is Monday Thursday. This long passage can be divided on three major events. The first major event you could see here is from chapter 24, verse 1, till end of chapter 26, verse 19. In this particular section, the Lord Jesus, he preached a discourse he presented. And because this had taken place on the hill of Mount Olives, this is called as Olivet Discourse. So in one particular place, people gathered together and to them he presented this particular section. And then if you move on to chapter 26 verses 20 to 35 and there you see the lord jesus he celebrated passover he had passover meal with the disciples and then when you move on to the third section that is chapter 26 verses 36 to 46 it speaks about jesus demonstration of his trust in God's sovereign plan through the prayer, the kind of prayer, the mode of prayer he prayed before three chosen apostles, James, John, and Peter. So on this day, when these three things are important things in the sight of Matthew and for that reason he had recorded it, we should also try to find what did he say in detail. Now I want to throw you some more insights that I found here. The first section, what I said, is from chapter 24, verse 1, till end of 26, verse 19. All that are given in that passage are primarily in relation to the 
future history of Israel. If you take the biblical events, it's not that Bible is about the people of Israel. That's not the idea. Bible is about God's sovereign work for mankind, the redemptive plan of God for the mankind in general. And God had chosen a strategy to make that redemptive plan of God understandable for everyone, and that is carried out by choosing the nation Israel as God's instrument. So that particular subject matter and its history, that is history of Israel, continued all the way from the time of Jacob, when he was named as Israel from that day, till the story that we read in Book of Daniel. And Book of Daniel closes with a future prediction and the temporal historical suspension of the development of the history of Israel. So Book of Daniel brings two things. One is the history information temporarily comes to an end here. And then the future history will follow in this manner. Now, whatever the future, future history will be for nation Israel, those historical future are again re-emphasized by the Lord Jesus here in this section, chapter 24, verse 1 to 26 to 19. In other words, this section is the continuation of the history of Israel, which will be in future. And then when you come to 26, 20 to 35, that is with the apostles, the Lord Jesus, he celebrates his Passover. The other way of saying is Last Supper. And there, actually, he delegates the responsibility of his mission, not only for people of Israel, but also for, for all the mankind. In other words, chapter 26, 20 to 35, is mission being handed over into the hands of apostles. And that mission is for the entire mankind, for all the nations. And even there, he wanted apostles to remember the Passover for a purpose. And that we have to read and find what that purpose is. And then when you come to the last part, 36 to 46 of chapter 26, Jesus demonstrated how much prayer is important when you and I, we sign up to execute God's plan and program. Signing up, it's a beginning. As you begin to do, you need energy, you need wisdom, you need power, you need tolerance, you need forbearance, because you will have so many trials and sufferings. So how could you do that? You have to have two strong determinations. One is accepting God's plan in your life, and the other one is recognizing God's power for your ministry. Let's go and see the first section chapter 24, verse 1 to 26, verse 19. This is, uh, this is a beautiful section. This section cannot be fully understood unless you have some basic information about what are the things being revealed through Daniel to the world. 
So it's better for you to think of Daniel chapter 9, well read. If you know that, that will make you to understand what God is wanting to do through the nation Israel. And in this section of uh, uh, Matthew's Gospel from verse 1, 24 chapter and 26, 19, the first emphasis that you see here in the section is about the rapture. How the church will be taken, the redeemed community of all the nations, how they will be taken, and how seven years period will be starting. So the first section in this section speaks about seven year period, what we call tribulation. So tribulation is one of the items reaffirmed by the Lord Jesus Christ in this Hollywood discourse. The details of rapture, you have to go to some of the passages and read about it. For example, book of Revelation, chapter 6, verse 1, chapter till chapter 19, verse 21, book of Revelation. It gives series of activities that will take place on this earth during the time of tribulation. Again, when, when tribulation is going to take place on this earth, the church will be with the Lord Jesus in peace. And that's what we call rapturing of the church. About it, we read in John's Gospel, chapter 14, and 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verses from 51 to 52, and 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. So, in the first part of the discourse, Jesus reaffirmed, reconfirmed, the historical future fact concerned with rapture of the body of Christ the church and the tribulation here on this earth for seven years time. And if you read continuously, you will find also some other information in this Hollywood discourse. What are the things that you see here? It speaks about first half, first half of tribulation, how that will be. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, verses 4 to 8. Verse 8 says it is birth pangs or birth pain. So that's the first half of these seven years, which is three and a half years. And what are the things will take place? The kind of conflicts, the kind of battles, all that will be taking place during that time, which is clearly given here in book of Matthew's chapter, gospel of Matthew's chapter 24, verses 4 to 8. And 24, 8 also says that verse is yet to come. So worse is yet to come, which means that seven years tribulation, first half with birth pangs, three and a half years, then the rest of the three and a half years will be worse than what it was. So we can, we can call that great tribulation. Chapter 24 up to verses eight, it makes it very clear that Tribulation and rapture or biblically futuristic event, and it cannot be negated, it cannot be withdrawn, it is for sure it will take place. 
And then when you read about verses 9 to 14 of chapter 24, it talks about the persecution of the Jews. Persecution of the Jews, how they will be persecuted. And then verse 13, in particular chapter 24, it talks about how the people will be delivered from the persecution, particularly in the light of Book of Acts chapter 13, verses 1 to 18, how the people, the Jewish people, will be delivered from the persecution, from the hands of the beast that will come. I don't want to get into the details of beast at this point. I'm just telling the outline of the um, the discourse. Then 24, 15 to 16, if you read, it gives further details concerning the tribulation. And uh, it also speaks about the abomination and a desolation that will take place in the future temple. And and description of that abomination and description and and desolation is also accounted in Luke's gospel if you go and read in chapter 21 verses 20 to 24. And 24 chapter uh, chapter 24 verses 16 to 20 it, it it tells about how this beast will be found with authority, seated on the seat of authority. And verse 21 is again the reaffirmation of great tribulation. Then if you move on, verses 23 to 28, if you read, and it speaks about astronomical, astronomical changes And and uh, the world will see the coming of the Lord Jesus visibly. And that's what verses 29 and 30 speaks about. So my beloved brothers and sisters, up to verse 30, if you read, in Oliver Discourse, Two key events are well predicted, reaffirmed by the Lord Jesus. One is tribulation preceded by the rapture of the church. Number two, the visible coming of the Lord Jesus Christ to this world. And if you move chapter 24, verses 32 to 34, it talks about the day of judgment. The day of judgment followed to the visible coming of the Lord Jesus. And then chapter 24, verses 25, sorry, 45 to 51, if you read, we see a kind of exhortation Jesus gives concerned with the future events that he had predicted. So 45 to 51 talks about the parable of the ten virgins. And what is that the parable communicates? The parable communicates the need for watchfulness and faithfulness. There are two things. The people of God are expected to be watchful and faithful. Is it only for the people of Israel? No. It's for all. It's for all. When I say it's for all, because the transition of mission responsibility is going to be handed over by the Lord Jesus to the apostles. And reaching out into the world is going to start soon. And so that watchfulness and faithfulness 
is meant for all the believers, not only the Jewish believers. And then also you can read there the parable of sheep and goats. You know, that confirms distinctions. When God is going to judge, he will judge not randomly. He will judge with clear distinction on the basis of their faith. So all that are here given mainly world to see the prophetical fulfillments that will take place upon nation Israel. It's, it's, it's primarily to nation Israel. But we are the we will be the onlookers and we will see that happening. And so we will know we should come to know that Jesus is the savior of the world, God the Son. So we must be watchful and faithful. Now the key passage comes. This is chapter 26, verses 20 to 25. And here we see the the Passover supper is getting ready. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. So Jesus with the twelve apostles, apparently Jewish people. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful and began to say to him, one after another, is it I, Lord? He answered, he who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but owe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him? Answered, is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, you have said so. My beloved brothers, now see the categorical separation here we see. In verse 20, it says, when it was evening, he reclined at the table with the twelve, and as they were eating. So there is certain amount of eating pot. And in that eating, Jesus was also part of it. So I strongly believe that was the Passover meal or Passover supper. They were all eating. As they were eating, this is what Jesus says. Jesus said, one of you will betray me. One of you who is eating with me, this supper, this last supper will betray me. Is it I? Is it I? Is it I? And Jesus said, it is you. Judas, it is you. So what do we see here? That last supper, which is the reminder of the redeeming work of God which is the reminder of God's expectation for the redeemed community to remain faithful to him and worship him and adore him faithfully, truthfully. They were all taking part and there was one man. He already decided to betray him. At this point, Peter himself did not know that he also would betray Jesus eventually. And he did, and John did not know he would desert Jesus and run away. And there were some other disciples eating along with him. They also joined John and they ran away and went to fish again along with Peter. What I'm trying to say, there was a betrayer, there was a backslider. There were few unfaithful disciples, but all of them are putting their hands and taking part in this supper, Passover. You see the distance between 
adhering the ritual and their original spirit. They are part of the ritual, but they are not part of God's program fully. They, they, they remember that they were redeemed, but they are not behaving as redeemed people. After that, we come to verse 26. Now you see a slight change, which many of us, we don't notice. But I want this particular change of the way it is accounted is very important. 26. Now, the word now. So that gives a kind of uh, calling our attention. Now, as they were eating, so as they were already eating this supper, as they were eating, Jesus took bread and after blessing it, broke it. Oh, is it a second occasion or continuation? And this is what I said. Here I see the mission responsibility is handed over, transferred to the apostles. This is a very significant event. As they were taking part in the Pascha meal, as continuation of that, Jesus took the bread and then he blessed it and then he broke it and he gave it to the disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body. You know, this part of agenda, we don't read in Exodus chapter 12. This is something, intentional inclusion of the Lord Jesus. This is a new passage toward the same direction which had already started in Old Testament. What was started in Old Testament? Redemption, redeemed people, people of God in his promised land with him forever and ever. Distracted, disrupted, interrupted, disturbed, all that had taken place because of the disobedience and the rejection of the people of Israel. Now, God shifts its gear, suspending the nation Israel for some time and sending these 12 disciples into the world and telling them, listen, there is going to be another Paschal lamb soon will be slaughtered will be sacrificed soon that's going to take place when that's going to take place that lamb will die for the sins of the world as the lamb of passover redeemed one generation of people on that particular day now this paschal lamb God the Son, his sacrifice will redeem the entire community, all the people of the world. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood on the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Again. You don't see this in Exodus chapter 12. This is not any way part of what had been transferred from generation to generation, starting from Moses. This is something, new legacy, Jesus says, drink of it. This is my blood. This wine is my blood. He doesn't say that this becomes my blood. This represents my, my blood. Symbolically, this is my shed blood, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, 
I will not drink again of this fruit of the wine until that day when I drink it anew with you in my father's kingdom. You know, up to up to verse 25, it was last supper, I said. And that came to an end. That Passover meal, Passover supper, historically had come to an end here. Now, he took the bread and broke it and said, this is my body. He took the wine and said, this is symbolically my blood. My body was broken. My blood was shed because of the forgiveness of the sins of the world. Whoever believes their sins will be forgiven and they will become forgiven people. They are redeemed people. And this is ultimate Pascha. After this Pascha, there is no other Pascha. This is Pascha because of the Lamb of God here is God the Son. And after this Pascha, where again it will be? It will be in heaven. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the wine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. So this table of the Lord. When I say table of the Lord here, which means the primary requirements for this table is shed blood of the Lord Jesus and broken body, only these two. Symbolically, bread was there and wine was there. This is first and last on the earth. And the ultimate will be in kingdom, which is yet to come. No more. But Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me every time. So whenever we gather, we have been celebrating Lord's table as a reminder, reminding us what? The body of Jesus was broken for the forgiveness of sins. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ was shed on the cross for the forgiveness of sins. And so that the redeemed people will be with Jesus in kingdom. A day will come in kingdom. We will have again this Pascha of Lamb. So, when I celebrate Lord's table, I remember this precious truth. Not only this precious truth, what had started by God, the history of the Israel, the nation Israel, that also will be fulfilled, that also I will see. The church will see the fulfillment of the history of Israel. The church will see the kingdom. The church will see the visible coming of the Lord Jesus, the church will also see the judgment. My beloved brothers and sisters, after doing this, now the Lord takes these people with, with him. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount Olives. Then Jesus said to them, you will fall away. You will all fall away because of me, this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said, no, Lord. Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, truly, I tell you, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same. That's very important. All the disciples said the same. What Jesus said, the mission is interested into your hand. The mission is interested into your hand. This is very painful burden. It cannot be carried out. In order that you should carry out, you have to have two sticks in your hand. One is the stick of promise. The other one is stick of prayer. Unless you have these two, two sticks, you cannot. So 
what Jesus did here. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. You know, the word Gethsemane here, it has very significant meaning, which means olive press. So the people would bring the olive, olives from their farms to this, this particular place, and they will press the olives and take the oil out of it. And olive oil, olive oil is meant for healing, good for health. It's for people. So now, get Gethsemane, a place where olive will be pressed. Now Jesus is going to be crucified there. So in that place, Jesus now is wanting to pray. So he took his disciples, three important disciples, the pillars of the church eventually. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. Who says this? God the Son, he says. He says, this is too much. I'm so sorrowful. You know, because he is going to bear the sins of the world on the cross. God the Son knew how much it will be painful. And going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. You know, it's a very short prayer. In the short prayer, two things Jesus he expresses. One is, Lord, your plan is more important for me. It's so painful, Lord. Doing your plan, being part of your plan is so painful, Lord. If my role can be taken away, that would be better. But your will, though it's painful, your will, which is more important for me, your will, not my pain. And so he prayed. What he's demonstrating is demonstrating this. God's plan will certainly read pain for his children. That's God's plan. To what extent? To an extent that you cannot bear even. Then how to tolerate it? How to do it? How to respond? You must be within the plan of God. How? Two sticks. Prayer and promises. And Jesus was holding that promise. You have sent me. You said you will not depart from me. You and I, we are always one. I hold on to the promise. I ask you, Lord, give me power. Give me power. And we see that angels came and ministered to him. I'm not going to read the entire passage. But disciples were not following it. They were not keen to listen about it. They were sleeping, which means they thought mission can be carried out easily by them. They did not know the amount of pain. They did not know the amount of challenges they would come across. On that day, Jesus demonstrated they did not understand they were sleeping. Indeed, after some time, they understood the need of prayer, the need of promises. Just go and read Book of Acts chapter 1 and 2. Why did they gather together on the upstairs, upper room? To pray. And what did they pray? Lord, your promises to be fulfilled now. On that particular day, they did not listen to it. But after some time, they recognized God's mission cannot be carried out. God's calling cannot be carried out unless 
I have faith in God's promises. I have faith in God's plan for me. To have that faith, to stay in that plan, I need prayer. We need prayer. And that's what we see the life of the apostles eventually. My beloved brothers and sisters, during this particular occasion, after all that had taken place, Jesus was taken for crucifixion. Indeed, in between, as we read in John's Gospel, Jesus washed the feet. Jesus washed the feet. It was just telling, I condescend to your level in order to take you up. I condescend to your level and so that you can ascend to my level. And that's why God entrusted the mission into the hands of the apostles. On this day, Monday, Thursday, what kind of response you want to give? Do you believe the second coming of the Lord Jesus? Do you believe the church will be raptured? Do you believe the tribulation will be on this earth? If you believe, be faithful. Be faithful to the Lord. Repent from all your failures. Repent from all your sins. You cannot escape. Judgment is for sure. There is only one Lamb of God all through the history the Pascha lamb. One time, one death on the cross, the lamb of God, Pascha of lamb of God, is all sufficient for you and I to be cleansed forever and ever. Repent, return, come back to him. The other one that you have to remember. The mission is entrusted. Jesus' mission is entrusted into your hands and my hands. We have to carry it out. It's painful. It's not easy. We have to think of our calling and we have to think of God's promises. And keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Every step that you want to take for the Lord Jesus should go with prayer. You need power, you need courage, you need wisdom. And that's what Monitas tells us. And finally, my beloved brothers and sisters, unless yourself and myself is crucified, Pascal Lamb died on the cross, crucified and died. So, the global blessings we have today. If that blessing ought to be transferred, distributed to all the nations, and there is a need for you and me to be crucified, not physically, but myself must be crucified. I must be willing to be crucified. I must be willing to go toward the crucifixion. May God give you grace. May God give you strength that you will believe all these scriptural truths and be viable for the Lord and for his mission. May you continue to be faithful, truthful, and so that you, your family, your church, and your neighborhood will be blessed by you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word that you have brought to us this evening. Traditionally, today is Monday, Thursday. Lord, we want to go deeper than the traditional values. We want to reaffirm our faith in your second coming. We want to reaffirm the rapture of the church. We all will be with you forever when the tribulation takes place on this earth. We believe, Lord, judgment is for sure. We believe, Lord, the kingdom is for certain. We all will be with you forever and ever. So give us grace, like Jesus, that we may claim the promises 
and continue to do our calling by drawing power, divine power from high above through the prayers. Thank you for this evening, for the thoughts that you have shared. In Jesus' name, amen. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us for now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for being with me this evening. May God continue to go with you. May you and God walk together always. Good night.